you know, we've talked about gun control on this program with you uh, many times. Um, you know, the year started off with a big push following uh, the, 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 the tragedy uh, in Newtown, uh, the anniversary of which uh, just passed a week or so ago. And, um, uh, you know, obviously, I, you know, there's not a lot to say. Obviously, there was no movement, at least on a federal level. There was a couple of states. New York did something. Connecticut did something. <clears throat> there was a couple other states that um, were able to sort of push this forward. There was a couple of uh, small administrative uh, uh-huh. changes. But, um, you know, this is uh, this is the, the, this is just an ongoing problem where you have, you know, just so much money on a on a on a national level that is. Uh, invested in making sure that, um, you know, we have a tremendous amount of guns uh, being yeah. sold on a daily basis. Well, it was, you know, it was a huge disappointment in terms of after something like this, uh, the tragedy that happened in Newtown. I mean, had that been um, a couple guys with Muslim names, who can only imagine what we would have done? Right. Um, but but uh, the, the people who are kowtowing to the gun industry. But, you know, so right now it's definitely upsetting in terms of not getting national legislation in a number of states. Obviously, Colorado, which is a swing state, got legislation. And you had two state senators in a very small off-year election recalled. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this, in the in the bigger, broader picture, um, in the future, well, eventually when we get same gun laws, this will be the year everyone will look back to when everything changed. Uh. Um, because culturally, new groups popped up, the Sandy Hook Promise Group, Newtown Action Alliance, uh, you know, Moms Demand Action popped up and now has 125,000 moms around the country, chapters in all 50 states, and they just joined with Mayors Against Legal Guns literally yesterday. They merged with them. So there's now a grassroots, huge grassroots chapter in an organization that already is, has a lot of money. Um, and, you know, you've seen things change culturally. It's become an issue where people, you know, Democrats can't just count out of the NRA and get away with it. Uh, they will be targeted for it, you know, and culturally, you know, businesses like Starbucks can't just get away with saying, we're not going to allow guns in our corporate headquarters, uh, but we're going to allow guns. In, in stores based upon local laws and put your lives in danger but not ours and people stood up to them and boycotted um, and they backed down uh, and so I, I you know I just no nobody's consciousness particularly parents is parents who have kids in the school it won't ever be the same after this and that's why I'm positive that they're on the, you know demographically they're on the losing end but they're, they're on the losing end because there's now a lot of people that have grown in terms of their passion about this issue because they realize how much more dangerous it is for all of us just walking the streets in this country than in any other country, you know, that, that has a similar, you know, similarly, um, you know, similar wealth to us and a similar uh, economic and, and government system that we have. And it makes no sense. So, um, you know, so short term, yeah, it was really disappointing. I'm not going to say it wasn't losing was, you know, the, the, uh, the, the laws in, in Washington, but you know, seeing Terry McAuliffe in the state of Virginia stand up and openly call for an assault weapons ban and a ban on right. a limit on magazine size and win that election. You know, the same thing with the attorney general, who now is in the recall election, has just won. Those would, would have been things that no Democrat would dare do in a state like Virginia as recently as the last election for fear that they couldn't possibly overcome the NRA. And here they beat them in their own backyard. So, um, and, and, you know, on, on this court, you know, we don't, I don't have time to talk about it uh, today. We could we just uh, but um, we're going to put a link to a piece in Slate, which um, talks about a new uh, study published in the International Review of Law of Economics. And it shows that the less guns you have, it, uh, it actually implicates the number of suicides. Um, and, you know, so there's a, a clear uh, correlation between um, guns and deaths, whether it's, it has to do with um, a homicide or suicide. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll put a link well, up to that and hopefully maybe... I'll just say that, that. I know we have to be quick about it, but just to say it quickly, I mean, it's clear that the success rate is something of like 20%. Uh, of all other methods of trying to commit suicide, it's like 90% when you use a gun. Right. Um, and I'll say, you know, when Australia passed their whole, when they had their Port Arthur massacre, which was like Newtown uh, in 1996, and they passed a whole raft of laws. They said a side benefit, which they hadn't even fully expected, was suicide went down something like 60 or 70%. So, yes, you should, people should check that link out. 